if we look at what flashbacks are, they're fragments of memory that has, hasn't yet been processed. So when we're overwhelmed at the moment of trauma, um, part of the brain, the thalamus, which acts as a cook and kind of stirs all the ingredients together and then gives us a, a complete experience, the cook, the, the thalamus shuts down. Uh, and so our experience isn't integrated at the moment that we're having it. It remains disintegrated, we could say dissociated. Um, but that's happening at the moment where something bad is happening. And so our, our brain, so it's mainly uh, amygdala driven, our flashbacks, whereas normal memory is more uh, hippocampus driven. The amygdala is saying to us, well, something bad happened. There's something here. I'm not sure what it was. Was it the smell? Was it the, the, the look of the light on, on, on the window? Was it the position that you're in? Was it a tone of voice? Was it a feeling? There's something in this soup that was associated with something dangerous in the past. So I need to warn you about it. So the amygdala sets off the the smoke alarm within the body and it, and it says, well, there's, there's there's danger here. So we can look at flashbacks as, as glitches, as something that's gone wrong in the brain, or we can look at them as is exactly what the brain is supposed to be doing, to be warning us of a danger, so a traumatic event, traumatic circumstances, that we've not yet addressed and, and looked at properly. And once we start addressing and looking at, at that, the brain doesn't need to keep warning us about it because we've taken the action we needed to take. So if we were mauled by bears, which is my, my, my favourite analogy, and, and there's something furry, and oh, well, there's a trigger in the fur that causes a flashback of us being mauled by, by bears, the brain is saying, what, what, you remember what happened with the bears? You haven't done anything about them yet. You, you've not got safe from, from that. Whereas once we've processed what went on, once we've sat around the campfire and we've said, um, hey, I was down by the river, I was collecting berries and a bear came out of the bushes and attacked me. And we've told the rest of the tribe. And then as a tribe, we've gone and we've either moved camp or we've dealt with the bears, we've hunted them or we've, we've decided not to go down by the river anymore then the brain doesn't need to keep reminding us. So I think as time goes on in therapy, what we're in effect doing is we're saying, I want to look at this stuff. I want to look at the dangerous stuff that happened in order to process it. I want to recover from this trauma. And recovering from it means that we find out what the dangerous thing was that happened and we do something about it. So as I do things about the things that happened to me, I feel more more safe. You know, I, I, after I was raped just before pandemic, I went through a period when I was really struggling with it, where I had lots of security cameras, so I could see what was going on outside. And, you know, my front brain was saying, it's okay, you're safe. And um, my back brain was saying, no, 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 we're not safe. We're, we're not safe. And I came to a decision within myself to say, let's just give my back brain a bit of support and a bit of scaffolding at the moment, so we've got some security cameras and at any moment where I'm feeling, oh, there's a trigger, there's a flashback, there's a reminder. Let's go and look on the security cameras and I can reassure myself that I'm that I'm safe. So I was taking action for myself to keep myself safe. And I, almost in a way, I, I was able to um, earn back my trust from myself. So my front brain that, you know, my back brain was blaming my front brain in effect, or parts were blaming other parts, like, well, you got us into that situation where we got raped, and so we can't trust you to keep us safe. And so I had to take various actions to prove my trustworthiness back to myself, prove my safety back to myself. And that's in little things and in little, you know, ways that I, I acted and did it. But I did that mindfully to say to myself, it's OK, I have done something about the bears. And so then the more I did that, the more we process the narrative of the trauma, which I believe we do need to do, because if not, we don't know that it was bears. We don't know that they were down by the river. So how can we take action to keep ourselves safe? And um, once I processed more of the narrative, then I stopped having flashbacks because my brain was saying, you've, you've heard. We've sent the message that that wasn't safe. You've now done something about it and made yourself safe. So we don't now need to warn you every single time it happens. So I don't see flashbacks as the brain gone wrong. I see the flashbacks as the brain desperately trying to deliver a message to get us to do something to make ourselves safe. And often they continue because we've not taken the action to make ourselves safe. So we may even have been in therapy for years talking around everything 
but we've not actually made ourselves safe from the person who abused us in the past. And and so we wonder why we keep having flashbacks or uh, we wonder why we keep struggling with trauma symptoms of hyperactivation, you know, hyperarousal, hypoarousal. But ultimately, we're not fundamentally safe. Um, now, none of us is ever fully safe. And I think that's the, you know, it's why back brain throws in as a curveball all the time. It's just like, well, look, you thought you were safe and then no fault of your own, you, you got right through no fault of your own, you fell down down the stairs. And so it's always that balance, isn't it, of sort of saying, we'll be as safe as we, we can be and we will take care, um, but we will go and live life. And it's that reality that there will still be bears out there, but we do need to go and we do need to gather berries as well. And we do need to live our life and, and support ourselves. So everything is always a balance. You don't want to stay in the cave um, away from you know, away from the bears, but also away from the berries, you have to take some risks in life. And for me, being able to assess those risks accurately by knowing exactly what bears are like and where they were, where I counted them, how they attack, what time of day they come out, through exploring the trauma narrative has given me a, a much better way of risk assessing the actions that I've, I've, I've taken in life, the things that I need to do to keep safe.